The sponsor of this video, Retail Me Not, has an exclusive giveaway for our viewers at the end of the video. The Sengoku Jidai, the warring states of feudal Japan. This era evokes many romantic images of great castles, spectacular battles and stoic samurai adorned in their elegant kimonos and top-knotted hair, wielding their iconic katanas. What if we told you that among the ranks of this ancient warrior order was a black man from East Africa? This is the tale of Yasuke, the first man from outside Japan to don the dual katanas and the only African to do so. To begin the tale of the African Samurai, we must first establish the context. In the early 15th century, the Portuguese Empire had a scattering of trade outposts across the Asian Pacific. In the year 1543, they reached southern Japan. The Japanese relied heavily on the import of silk from Ming China, and as the relations between the two states were icy, and trade between the two was forbidden by the Ming Emperor, the Portuguese established a niche trade by buying silks in China and bringing them to Japan. These European merchants grew very rich as intermediaries between the two Asian heavyweights. The Portuguese were allowed to build a trading port at Nagasaki, which quickly became a large hub for commerce. And where the Europeans went, their priests would soon follow. The Catholic Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits, established a significant presence in southern Japan. Their mission was to convert all Japan to Christianity, spearheaded by priests like Francis Xavier. At the height of their influence, several daimyo lords and over 200,000 Japanese were Christian, mostly in the Kyushu region. Of course, the Portuguese and their Jesuit compatriots were spreading their influence on other continents as well. By the 1500s, they had established a foothold in Africa, in what is now Mozambique. Here, they became enthusiastic participants in the local slave trade, acquiring many poor souls from the local chiefs who they would in turn ship out for labor across their maritime empire. That a dark-skinned man from Africa became a samurai in feudal Japan is considered a fact. However, we know very little about him. Details on his country of origin, early life, and even his original name are muddy at best. We know only the name given to him by the Japanese, Yasuke. The story we've chosen to depict here is our personal interpretation of the few pieces of information we have about his life. We have only theories for the origins of this mysterious man. Some say he was born around the year 1555 in Mozambique, which at the time was being colonized by the Portuguese. He was most likely of the Makua peoples, a Bantu tribe, although some claim that he was from Ethiopia and belonged to the Habshi people. Either way, the saga of this East African man began in his childhood, where he was most likely enslaved and given to the local Jesuits. He was taught the Christian religion and the Catholic lifestyle, and brought up to believe in the proselytizing ways of the Jesuit order. After some time, Yasuke was given to the Jesuit inspector Alessandro Valignano. Valignano's mission was to audit Jesuit activity in Japan. So he sailed east with his servants and slaves in tow. Thus, in the year 1579, the as yet unnamed man of East Africa first set foot on Japanese soil, behind the coattails of his Jesuit master. It is here we should briefly explain the Japan that he stepped into. The Warring States period, known as the Sengoku Jidai, was nearing its climax. Japan had been divided into many independent little fiefdoms in 1467. By 1579, however, most of these fiefdoms had been conquered by the ambitious daimyo Oda Nobunaga of the Oda clan and his vassal Toyotomi Hideyoshi. In 1581, Valignano brought his African servant into Kyoto, the beating heart of Japanese civilization and seat of Oda Nobunaga. The Bantu man had likely never seen a metropolis of such size and bustle, nor had the people of Kyoto ever seen anyone like him. When rumors spread of a giant man with skin like charcoal, the local Kyotans grew so curious that they broke down the door of the Jesuit church just to get a look at him. The African quickly achieved status as a local celebrity, for the common folk were astonished not only by his dark skin, but his size and height, as he stood a solid foot taller than the average Japanese man. 
The growing fame of this enigmatic foreigner eventually piqued the curiosity of Lord Nobunaga, who ordered the Jesuits to present the African to him. When they came face to face, Nobunaga was astonished. The warlord did not believe such a man could exist, and was convinced he was actually a Portuguese man who had his skin dyed with black ink. He had the African strip from the waist up and be thoroughly scrubbed. This of course proved that his skin was naturally dark. Upon realizing this, Nobunaga took a genuine interest in the man, and it was at around then that he finally received his Japanese name, Yasuke. Yasuke soon became more than just a novelty to Lord Nobunaga. The daimyo came to appreciate the man's personal integrity and his physical prowess. He declared that Yasuke possessed the strength of ten men. In the summer of 1581, Nobunaga's admiration of this strange foreigner had become undeniable, and thus he formally requested that Yasuke enter his service. It was official now. The man of humble Bantu origins was a samurai. Yasuke was afforded all the privileges any other samurai would receive. He was granted a piece of land and a household upon it, Japanese garments, and a ceremonial short katana. It can be assumed that he was taught the Bushido code and how to fight as a samurai. Yasuke became one of Nobunaga's favorite servants, and was one of the few people afforded the privilege of dining with the great daimyo. Yasuke soon joined his new lord in his mission to conquer all Japan. He likely saw combat at the Battle of Tenmokuzan, fighting fiercely alongside Nobunaga's forces to destroy the Takeda clan. It was the first time any Japanese warrior had encountered an African in combat, and the strength and ferocity of Nobunaga's newest soldier was a thing to behold. After the engagement, Yasuke rode at Nobunaga's side as the Lord surveyed his newly conquered lands, and one can only imagine the wonder that many would have felt seeing such a giant of a foreigner riding in such a position of prestige at their liege lord's side. On their way back to Kyoto, he rubbed shoulders with many of Nobunaga's powerful allies, names we consider larger than life. One such man was Tokugawa Ieyasu, the man who in time would conquer all Japan. In June of 1582, Yasuke and Nobunaga arrived back in Kyoto. Nobunaga split his army and sent them forth to conquer the lands of the Mori, Uesugi and Hojo clans. He retired to the Buddhist temple of Honoji, where he intended to rest. Surrounded only by artists, merchants, poets and servants, Nobunaga was largely unprotected. Yasuke, however, was by his side. Disaster was soon to come. An enemy host surrounded the temple. This was a complete shock, for none of Nobunaga's foes were supposed to know he was there. One of Nobunaga's most trusted generals, Akechi Mitsuhide, had betrayed him. He took advantage of his knowledge that Nobunaga was vulnerable and laid siege to the temple where his liege lord stayed. The treacherous Mitsuhide stormed the temple with overwhelming numbers. Yasuke charged out, mounting a desperate battle against the odds, with only a few bodyguards and servants fighting by his side. He fought bravely, but to no avail. Amidst the chaos and fire, Nobunaga had to commit seppuku, honorable suicide, so as to avoid capture. Somehow, Yasuke was able to escape Akechi's clutches. He found a horse and rode hard for Nijo Castle, where Nobunaga's son, Oda Nobutada, had mustered his forces. Where he had failed to protect his lord, Yasuke was now determined to protect his son. He arrived just in time, joining the young lord's army just as the traitor Mitsuhide attacked them. Yasuke fought hard in the battle that ensued, once more engaging Mitsuhide's samurai and slaying many in the defense of young Nobutada, but once again it was for naught. The Oda forces were routed, and Oda Nobutada was captured and forced to commit seppuku. Yasuke too was captured and presented before Mitsuhide. The traitorous general had nothing but contempt for the black man, declaring him to be non-human, little more than an animal. Because he was not Japanese, Mitsuhide declared that Yasuke was not to be killed and instead sent to the Christian church in Kyoto. And thus, after serving as a noble samurai for over a year, Yasuke was returned to his Jesuit masters. Reportedly, the Christians eagerly praised God when reunited with the man. It would be a nice thing to believe that Yasuke's tale had something of a happy ending. Unfortunately, we don't know. 
All records of his existence fade away after this point, and we do not know what his ultimate fate was, whether he left Japan with the Jesuits or died on the islands. From humble beginnings on the east coast of Africa to the grandeur of the palaces of Kyoto, the rise of Yasuke from slave to samurai is a unique one to say the least. He may not have been a samurai for long, and his influence upon the island nation may not have been as great as other foreigners who followed him, but his story serves as the inspiration for various pieces of media, such as anime like Afro Samurai and games like Neo. Whether it be the man himself or what he represented, Yasuke enjoys a special place in the hearts of many Japanese people today, and is a wonderful story of what strange fates can be thrust upon the humblest of men. The sponsor of this video, Retail Me Not, is the ultimate destination for saving on your online purchases, and it now has a browser extension called Retail Me Not Genie that makes it easier than ever to save money when you shop online. Genie runs in the background, searches for promo codes and cashback offers when you're shopping online, and applies the discounts at checkout. With Retail Me Not Genie doing all the work, you'll never have to search for a deal again. The Retail Me Not Genie browser extension is free and available for all the major web browsers like Chrome or Firefox. Use the link in the description to download the free Retail Me Not Genie browser extension today and start saving the easy way. You can enter to win a $100 Visa gift card by downloading the Genie browser extension and letting us know in the comments below what deal you're most excited to use. We'll pick a winner from the comments section. We will continue this two-part series with the story of William Adams, the English Samurai. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the alarm bell. These videos are made possible by our brilliant patrons over at Patreon and our YouTube sponsors. Visit our Patreon or press the sponsorship button to learn more about the perks. This is the Kings and Generals channel and we will catch you on the next one.